Welcome to Ami Ami Recap, the show where I talk trash about new figure pre-orders for god knows how long. As usual, I've gone and opened all the figures in separate tabs for this month. I usually cover around 20 figures per video. I have 80 tabs open right now, so I think I'm definitely going to have to split this month up because there are so many figures to talk about, it's, it's crazy. And if you are a returning viewer and fan of this series and you're not subscribed yet, I would really appreciate if you hit that button to help grow the channel and so you get notified when the next one comes out. So without further ado, I think I'm just going to start rambling about figures. <laughs> so I'm starting off with this figure, which wasn't even in June. I think she was May 31st uh, and I just completely missed it. This figure is particularly interesting to me because I feel like it's really strange that it's taken this long for Miku to get a bunny B-style figure, considering how much they milk Miku and just B-styles in general. And I kind of like it. Like, it's a bunny version and maybe the safest G-rated version possible. And I think it's really cute. I like the colours a lot. And I don't know, she just looks kind of classy and not super lewd, which is nice for a B-style. I'm always going on about there being way too much competition in the space for Miku figures that you need something that is particularly wowing and eye-catching at, at a good price, or else it's just, like, not worth it. And I don't think this one is particularly any of that, but I do like the novelty of it being a B-style. And I'd appreciate seeing more bunny B-styles in this sort of floofy dress outfit. I believe I also missed this figure from last month. I knew this looked familiar. We saw the concept art a few months ago at the Kotobukiya collection. I have no idea what Call of the Night is, so I don't know how this, like, spooky trench coat thing works. But it's a really cool and unique base with the character sort of jumping out of it. And the coat itself sort of, like, dissolving into this black, gooey shadow, almost. And it's got this print on it, which... To me, looks like a, some sort of city skyline, but that may be like a Rorschach test gone wrong or something. I don't know if it's just like random white splatters of paint or highlight, or if it's actually supposed to be a city, I don't know. But yeah, I think the sculpt of the coat is really nice. It's got some nice little roofly doofleys in there. And I think Koda has done a good job here with the different colours they've chosen. The girl is cute too, and she really stands out because her skin colour is like the complete opposite of everything else. I think the composition is great, the concept is awesome, and it's a really solid figure. Well, since I usually complain about B-Styles, I'll go a different route today because I actually like Alba. Just between us, don't tell anyone. I have an Alba body pillow. It's really, really cute. It's really wholesome as well, okay? Trust me, trust me, it's wholesome. So I like Alba a lot. I like this figure a lot just because it's, it's really, it's really cute. I think this, that, oh my god. <laughs> it should be illegal. Why do I hate B-Style so much? But this is just so appealing to me. Why? Why? I swear I'm not a lollicon, guys. I, trust me. Trust me. I'm surprised that this exists because I don't know if New Game still has any clout anywhere anymore. I think it was cool when I watched anime like five years ago, but I don't know now. They're also doing Hufumi. Oh my. Oh no. Oh. Oh god. I feel like the booty department here is just way more pronounced than usual on B Stars, but maybe I'm. Maybe I'm not looking that closely on the other ones. This Hifumi one is basically worthless because it doesn't come with her pet hedgehog. And everyone who cares about Hifumi also cares about Sojuro because he's really cute. And it's a real shame that he isn't included because he's like quintessential to Hifumi's character. Alba, on the other hand, I don't know if I could talk myself into buying this. However, it's very cute. And I like what they've done with her hair. It's really nice. A deluxe Kurumi? Do we need a deluxe Kurumi? How much is the cheap one? It's not that much cheaper. This is yet another Kurumi, but it is the first one by Prime One Studio, which is exciting. That mouth looks a bit sus. That's that's pretty cool, but I don't know about 50,000 yen cool. It's not the worst Kurumi I've seen, but I feel like they could have done a lot more shading on the dress to give it a bit of oomph. At least, like, at least if they're going to charge this month, just go wild. But I do like the pose and the sculpts. I think that's all fine. 
I think really my main concern with this is the price to value ratio is just it it feels a bit off. These fire effect parts are cool, but like not cool enough for the sort of money you're dropping on this. And I keep coming back to the face. I just I think the darkness of the mouth line makes it feel cheap. And what's up with this back clock thing? Is that literally just a piece of acrylic? Like, there's no depth to that clock. There's no way, right? Oh my god, it is acrylic. Why? So, no. No. <laughs> That's so bad. Why? So, like, what? Compared to the base version for an extra 200 bucks, you get, you know, a slightly better base with some extra plastic bits on it. And then, like, a large acrylic circle with a JPEG printed on it? Nah, man. Nah. That ain't it. I think at half the price for either of these, you've got a good deal going, but for this much, I couldn't recommend it. Always happy to see new altar figures. Never happy to see the price of new altar figures, though. Alter's one of the few companies still consistently putting out 1-8 scales, but they usually do make up for it with the really beautiful bases and composition they, they have going on almost always. So I can forgive them a bit for that. But this looks gorgeous. It also comes in two variations. You've got this other one with a darker skin tone and a lighter hair tone. I feel like both of them pretty good. I'd probably go with the pink purpley head one just because I think it looks cuter. I like the cheeky face on this one as well. They have different faces. God, this is so pretty. I love like the metallic reds they've got going on. She looks like some sort of vampire. Is that what is that what they're going for with this? Ooh. Ooh, she's looking like a vampire now. I love that hair. That's an awesome sculpt. Alter's prototypes never disappoint me. They're always so cool. I think it's a really interesting and beautiful pair of figures. I would love to see this in person. I bet it's stunning. I love both of them, so it's a thumbs up for me. And it's always a thumbs up for Alter. I am so close to pre-ordering this figure. I play May in Guilty Gear because I like the dolphin. I think the dolphin's funny and cute. And my only issue with this figure is that there's no dolphin. And don't come at me being like, hey man, there's a there's a dolphin if you if you spend an extra 20 bucks. The $20 dolphin is an acrylic stand. Why? Give me a real big dolphin. I'll pay for it. They could have had Mr. Dolphin coming out of the base or something. It would have been, it would have been really cute. But oh well, it is what it is. Nevertheless, I think the figure is really pretty. I love all the details on May's outfit. I love her big, goofy Kingdom Hearts shoes. And the anchor's really nice as well. Like, it all just exudes the same very clean style that Strive has. And I feel like this is the one chance for May to, like, actually get a figure like this. So I'm kind of leading towards the pre-order because of that. Her design has cool details all over the place. The backpack just has a lot going on, and it's also got a funny face at the back. And you know, what other figure's gonna have you spend $200 on a comically oversized anchor weapon? You know, it's just this one. <laughs> so yeah, it might be my first pre-order in a hot minute. And if I do pre-order her, it'll be over on CD Japan. CD Japan is where I pre-order almost all of my figures these days. I think they have some of the lowest prices out there for figure pre-orders. They don't directly sponsor me, but I do have an affiliate link. So if you want to buy anything from this video, I recommend using my link, which is in the description of like all of my videos. And then that way, if you do end up making an order, I also get some money back for it. And then I can go buy more figures and fuel my addiction. So I really appreciate everyone who helps me out with that. But anyway, I'll uh, stop being a sellout and get back to the figures now. <laughs> Whoa. Damn, Mega House? I thought this was E-Stream or something. They feel like they're stepping up a bit. This is your boy Satoru Gojo, a deluxe figure by Mega House. I've never seen him without like that eye mask on. He looks kind of cute. Uh, anyway, look at that. That's... Whew. Damn. I think it loses some of its impact from the side, but even still, it's pretty awesome looking. I think the editing in Photoshop that the entire industry is doing right now is just, it's getting worse. It doesn't look anything like that. Like, surely that's false advertising. 
Usually effect pieces use clear plastic. This uses a really striking like white and purple mix. It looks powerful. And especially from this angle, the colors of like this lightning stuff matches Gojo so well. And then for Gojo himself, I'm not sure where this purple shading is coming from. I don't know if that is like a purple light off to the side or whether they've brushed some really nice purple highlights and shading onto the black outfit. I can't exactly tell. But if it is that mix of purple and black, it seems like a massive improvement over a lot of figures I've seen Mega House put out where they look very flat and one note with their coloring. The, the coloring on this one just looks awesome. I think they've done a really great job with it. The hair sculpt for what it is also looks pretty good. It looks very cool and dynamic, uh, even for short hair like that. So I'm really happy with this prototype. I really enjoy it. Oh, It looks like Furu is doing a second version of all their Princess Connect figures. I really like this just because I like Kokoro's design in general. I also really like the first one. I think that one turned out great as well. The face and especially the eyes on this figure are just enchanting. Like, I'm just madly in love with the colors of Kokoro's design. I think it's just such a nice green, pink, and white combination that works so well together. And she always gets these really nice dynamic faces like, oh, it's gorgeous. It's so pretty. There's not really any close-ups of the staff, but, but I love the sculpt and the coloring on that as well. Even though it adds the blue, it doesn't feel disconnected from her at all. Man, the coloring here is awesome. I think that's just the clear pink with the solid green above it, but the way that looks from the back is, is awesome. It makes a really cool effect. I'm a big fan of this. I really hope for you can do this prototype justice. It looks so pretty. All the colors, all the everything, all the everything about this is gorgeous. I'm in love once again. Here is Spirit Tale with another birthday Miku. This is 2021. The 2020 birthday Miku they did is maybe one of my favorite figures ever, which I didn't buy because it's absurdly expensive. Anyway, the 2021 version. I'm less enamored about this one, but it's still completely gorgeous in its own right. It's it's kind of weird that this is the birthday figure when it feels more like Easter. It kind of is just a bunny girl Miku that they're saying is birthday themed. I think maybe the impressive part about this is the sculpt and just fitting so many little details and bits and bobs everywhere. And it it feels very alive. However, a lot of the paintwork feels a bit flat. These, these photos feel very pastel or desaturated in a way that just doesn't give me much confidence about if there's really going to be all that much shading on this figure at all. Like, one of the main things throwing me off are the yellow roses on her dress. They just all the one very light shade of yellow with nothing else done to it to give it any sort of detail. But all the sculpted detail and, like, the five layers on this dress it's like it's incredible and look she's even got <laughs> roller skates really wonder if those will spin surely not but it'd be it'd be fun if they did right i think the composition is also interesting as well since she makes sort of a a diamond shape since her twin tails go out so wide and then it all kind of points back in through those balloons and everything and so it's all right Maybe it turns out okay and the saturation on these photos is just a bit lackluster. Price-wise, it's whatever. I'm sure with the exchange rate now, people can justify spending more on figures, but she still seems a bit expensive for what she is, but, you know, I could maybe spring for it if you're really in love with the design. I saw this on the front page of Ami Ami, and I'm kind of assuming people are going crazy over the cat girl lolly with the fish. Seems like a top tier weeb bait. I think it is pretty cute, and she does come with two different faces. Uh, the second one, though, she looks like a different character. I feel like the eyes here look way more human. I don't know, she looks like actually a cat with this faceplate, which is, it's weird. But yeah, ultimately, it's just a pretty small, simple figure. The thing that really got me to click it with the color of the eyes and the fish, just contrasting with the very lightness of everything else. I think they've chosen some really strong, confident colors with that. I think it looks really nice. And I think it's a pretty intriguing little figure. 
have I seen these characters before? I can't even remember. Everything's such a blur to me. Either way, oh my god, look at the cat! Ooh, look at him. He's got a little heart on his chest. Oh my god. Cat, 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 cat. It looks so scraggly and unkempt. So yeah, these are a pair of figures. And they do look super adorable together. I, I love that. And this flower clip art on the base, though, you know, that ain't it. Why? Why? Why does this exist? Why do they both have it? You know, it doesn't match the art style at all. It's literally like <laughs> clip art. It's a very strange addition, but hey, the, the figures aren't ungodly expensive, so I think these character designs are really cute. I especially like this girl with her yellow umbrella. I just always seem to like umbrellas in figures. And they can always be like such a nice source of a big splotch of accent color. It just gives the figure so much more personality. So yeah, I like these. I don't really know what the hell they are, but looks cute to me. And it's got the funny looking cat, so that's definitely a plus. And the last figure before we get to the speed round is Sakuna from Sakuna. <laughs> I've been pleasantly surprised that Sakuna has been getting as, as many figures as she has. I would have expected zero, and there's at least two or three that I know of. And I just really like her character design. I think the game has a really nice art style, and it translates well into more unique looking figures. Especially those eyes, they're so cool. I enjoy how dynamic Belfine has made this figure, because really... Because really, it could have been kind of uninteresting. Cutting of crops or something, whatever. How, how do you grow rice? Is, is this game about growing rice? Am I, am I correct about that? She must rediscover her birthright as daughter of a warrior god. Cultivate rice, the source of her power. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> anyway, I think it's a nice figure. The listing says it's 22 centimeters, and so if that's up to this top yellow bit... She's kind of very small. It is what it is, I guess. If you like the game, I'm sure you're like way more interested in this than I am, but just at a baseline, me liking the character design, I think it's a pretty awesome figure. So now I guess I'll jump into the speed round. There's like a billion Uma Musume figures recently, and I'm like, does anyone care about this? I feel like no one cares. I am so sick of these Race Queen Azulene figures. If you followed the artwork, it could look good, but you'd be spending like $700 of plastic and like an entire room to make it look like this. But you know, what if what if you had a car? What if you had the whole stadium, the podium, everything? Well, just at least include the umbrella, all right? We've already determined I will give a figure a pass if there's an umbrella. Give me the umbrella. And it's all the more frustrating because they could have done this skin where she's like a crazy vampire lady and it, it'd be so much better. Come on Mimoyoi, no more 30,000 yen race queens with nothing on. Get <laughs> Among Us. You ever wanted your favorite Sanrio character to be turned into a squeezable piece of bread? Yeah, I know I did. Yep. Uh, give me Tuxedo Sam pronto. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take six. Is that a butthole? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden Hello Kitty butthole. What is that? What? <laughs> Why is the bottom half like flesh colored? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so cursed. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Ah, oh, I forgot about these. Now I need to buy them. <laughs> Look at the backs. Look at the little fins. Look at them. The orc has got a little heart on the back. I love it. This is the best thing Good Smile's done for Nandoroids in years. I'm pleasantly surprised this is getting a re-release. Uh, I'm a huge Symphogear fan. This is one of my favorite figures. It's awesome. I love it. Full Guys Hot Dog. <laughs> Imagine paying $30 for that. What's a 120 scale Fall Guy? Can I reverse engineer how big a Fall Guy is? Canonically 160 centimeters. That is terrifying. I gave too much love to B-Styles this episode, I need to put him back in line. The worst outfit I've ever seen, that's disgusting. And why is this character holding a candle? I don't get it, I don't understand. I'm confused and I need an adult. This guy really have a cow print cleaver? I like it, I like it. <laughs> I 
They actually put the dick suck on the Nendo. <laughs> no way! Man, I was about to blast into this Nendo for being terrible because it's by Chugai Mining and it's probably gonna be the the worst Nendo of all time. But they put that joke on there, which is the funniest thing of all time. Are people gonna get upset again if I if I don't acknowledge the Kaguya-sama B styles? Look, there they are. I, I've seen them. I don't care. I have no idea what to say about, like, actually every Shaman King figure that comes up, because I think the art style is kind of plain and ugly, and I just, I... There's nothing else for me to say, but I don't want to not acknowledge it, so, uh, here's the figure. I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a me issue. Is this tongue poking out of the mouth face becoming a thing? I really hope it doesn't. And so I think that's going to do it for this episode of Emmy Emmy Recap. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I'll be doing an extra episode for June just because there's a billion other figures I need to talk about. So if I didn't mention something in this one, it's probably just going to be in the next one. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. Otherwise, leave a like and comment down below and tell me what your favorite figure from this video was. Also remember you can support the channel by buying from CD Japan. But until next time, this has been the Ando Experience, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!